Hey YouTube, today I want to give you guys a quick video unboxing and walkthrough of the new Expo Disc 2.0. Um, I purchased this Expo Disc from Henry's uh, during the Christmas holidays, and the new disc is a improved version of the already fantastic Expo Disc version one. So let's take a look at what's inside. So let's take a look at what's inside its packaging here. We've got our nylon pouch, and no surprise, there is a neck strap. Um, inside the box is also, I forgot to mention, uh, some additional marketing material for uh, carbon expo imaging, such as the flash bender and all the other fun toys that they'd like to sell us. But inside the expo disc itself is, of course, the expo disc, and I have a 77 millimeter version here. Um, the included warming filters, which inside it appears to have some separating papers and a whole bunch of these different sort of gel-like um, filters. We've also got what it looks like an Expo Disc calibration certificate card, which is always great. So they've actually validated that the manufacturing quality of this disc meets specifications and that's about it so Expo Disc 2.0 here uh, is the second generation of Expo Imaging's you know award-winning Expo Disc 1 um, that allows our photographers um, and videographers alike to be able to set a perfect 18% neutral white or neutral gray white balance on their cameras to give you the best possible color imaging now that we've unboxed our brand new Expo Disc, let's take a look at how it compares to the original version. So this version here is Expo Disc 1.0, and I had purchased this about three years ago. Um, you know, in lieu of replacing my old-fashioned traditional gray card that I once used in my photo shoots. And the reason why I actually bought an Expo Disc was that it allowed me to calibrate my camera's white bounce you know, as optimal as I could get based on all the different light conditions that existed in the different shooting scenarios that I was always in. And so it's proved to be very useful. Um, I still continue using it all the time. Um, but I thought when Expo Disc 2.0 here got announced in late or mid-2013 that I thought, you know what, it'd be worth investing into a new one to put in my second camera bag and to see how it fared up against, you know, sort of the tried-tested and true solution here. So at a quick glance, the differences between the two are noticeable in that the prism pattern on the front of the new version is more coarse than the original Expo Disc 1.0. The other notable difference is the construction uh, and fit and finish of the Expo Disc. Now, Expo Disc 1.0 feels exactly like a nice or a decent quality camera filter. It's made out of aluminum. Um, and, you know, it's nice and smooth, right? And it's just got a nice solid feel to it. Whereas the Expo Disc 2.0 now has a more cheaply made plastic ring that the prism is held in, and you can see that you know in my camera here. Expo Disc 1.0 it doesn't have any seams, whereas Expo Disc 2.0 here has all these rough ridges uh, along the sides, and just in general, the construction quality uh, just feels a lot cheaper. Now, it is worth mentioning, however, that in light of the fact that you know they've made it out of plastic and not the traditional aluminum that the version original had, that Expo Disc 1.0 when it first came out in the equivalent size was a hundred bucks, whereas uh, Expo Disc 2.0 comes in at $49.95 everyday price. In fact, I actually purchased this Expo Disc for less than $40 when it was on sale before the Christmas holidays. So you're talking half the price to give you the same exact functionality. And I don't think anyone's going to really care about which Expo Disc you're using um, because, really, as long as it's doing its job, then who really cares about what materials they're made out of if you're using it for 10 seconds or less? Now, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that um, Expo Disc 1.0 had these sort of somewhat finicky ball spring clips here on the filter thread ring and occasionally you know if you weren't careful this Expo Disc would pop off your camera lens um, and I mean 
is that a concern for some people? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, I didn't find it a problem, but some people in forums have complained about that. Whereas the new Expo Disc 2.0 has this sort of camera lens cap light kind of locking mechanism with some actual teeth on the sides here to actually grip onto your filter threads so that it doesn't pop off. I don't know why you wouldn't want it to come off easily just because you will use it for about two seconds out of your camera bag to set your white balance. But anyways, um, the other big thing here is that Expo Disc 1.0 back in the day came out in two variants. The standard edition that you see here as well as a portraiture version uh, which actually uh, was the same Expo Disc but had a slightly bluer prism or had a slight blue cast to it so that, of course, it would create the opposite effect on your camera by making your images warmer with more orange tones in them. Uh, but essentially, if you had to buy both versions, you'd be spending $200 to buy the standard version and the portrait version. The neat thing with Expo Disc 2.0 is that it actually is two Expo Discs in one. So not only is it half the cost of the original Expo Disc, it also now includes this nifty portrait warming filter gels uh, inside the packaging. And inside you get two plus one portrait warming filters and two plus two uh, value warming filters. So essentially uh, you can convert this Expo Disc into a portrait one. Um, you know, to varying degrees of your liking by simply dropping in these included gels uh, into your Expo Disc. So that's a real fantastic pack-in, uh, you know, at no additional cost. So great value, guys, for half the price to get twice the functionality in light of the fact that it's made out of plastic now. Um, other things that are worth mentioning, um, or maybe not, I don't know, but the original Expo Disc uh, is manufactured overseas in Asia. So this one's made in China, whereas Expo Disc 2.0 is now manufactured, you know, right here in the United States, which is pretty cool. Um, now, for those that are wondering, which one should one buy when they're shopping for an Expo Disc? Well, my recommendations is buy the largest Expo Disc that you will need, you know, based on your current and potentially future per filter purchase or camera lens purchases, sorry. Now the reason for this is that if you have an Expo Disc that's too small for a camera lens, then you're going to have to either use a stepper ring or you're going to have to use a gray cart or something in uh, because you're not able to cover the entire front element of your lens. And so um, most of my lenses, uh, actually most of my lenses are 77 millimeters or smaller, so that's why um, you know Expo Disc 77 mil would work great for these applications you simply just you know snap this on and then you know take your white balance reference and then take it right off and of course if you have camera lenses that you know for example this 85 mil Canon lens that has a smaller filter you don't have to snap it on you simply put the expo disc over the front again and then do your uh, white balance reference now Unfortunately, I did, in fact, I actually wanted to buy an 82 millimeter version of this Expo Disc 2.0, like my original version one. But at the time of this making a video, uh, so at this time of this video publication, the only size available was a 77 mil Expo Disc. So I guess that's fine, uh, not really a big deal. I mean, I could always use a stepper ring or just simply wait for the 82 mil version to come out down the road. Um, but in any case, I have both now, so it doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot. Um, buy the biggest one you humanly can. It is worth the extra few dollars because the worst thing that could happen is you don't have an expo that's big enough for your lenses. So the final part of my video here is why bother using a gray card or an expo disc altogether for color balancing? My camera's already got built-in auto white balance or predefined white balance settings so that I don't need to buy these you know, sort of unnecessary tools and toys to put into my camera bag. And all I can say here is that, well, there's a few key advantages of making sure that your white balance is set properly right from the point of where you're shooting your subjects. The reason why is one, you save a whole bunch of headache in post-processing. Two, if you don't like to do post-processing and shooting JPEG, then it's even more critical to set the proper white balance because once you modify a JPEG, you lose a considerable amount of data in the file, which means you're going to have significantly diminished image quality and flexibility in terms of editing. Now, the other reason why I like using Expo Disk or a gray card, but more so an Expo Disk, is because in any given room, um, there's a whole bunch of different types of light that usually exist, especially when you're shooting uh, inside a home, for example. In my home, in the corners, I have incandescent lighting. I'm using a daylight temperature strobe, as well as I got some fluorescent overhead lamps 
Um, and of course, all of these different lights and even dependent on their age and positioning will give you a different color temperature of light. And so using a gray card sometimes won't allow you to capture all the different light sources in your scene uh, and be able to reflect back to your camera to give it a proper 18% gray expo average exposure. The beauty of ExpoDisc here, and this is part of why it's designed in the manner that it is, is that it uses this prismatic sort of front diffusing lens um, on the front and basically how you use it is you put it onto your camera lens and then you go to where your subject is and basically point the camera uh, at the predominant light source of where you're shooting from and then set your reference uh, white balance in that manner. And why is that important? Well, for example, I had mentioned earlier that there's a whole bunch of different kind of lights in my room. What Expo Disc will do is capture all the varying, you know, incandescent, tungsten, daylight, whatever light that you've got in your room, pass it through this prism and scatter it, and then allow your camera sensor to pick up the 18% gray average exposure reading, which means, of course, you're gonna get the most consistent balance and exposure for your particular scene. So that's why I like using an Expo Disc over a gray card. And those key points I mentioned earlier about less post-processing, you know, for white balance editing, um, as well as if you don't like to shoot raw, um, you know, Expo Disc can, you know, save your images, save the quality, and just make everything look better in general. So there you have it, guys. That is Expo Disc 2.0 unboxed, reviewed, as well as discussed in this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Rate, comment, and subscribe.